Hey everyone, it's Ryan here from Ratings.com. It was a bit of a struggle for us to buy, but today we'll be testing the extremely popular and much anticipated TCL QA25. It's a late addition to TCL's lineup for 2019 and is currently their highest end set. It boasts impressive specs and is the first widely available mini LED backlit TV in the US. So let's see how this new technology performs and how it stacks up. We'll look at the design, picture quality, motion handling and sound performance and then compare it to other TVs on the market to see if it's the best TV for you to get. In the description below, you'll find the timestamps to skip to the parts you're most interested in as well as the links to the full review on our website and where to buy it. We have the 65 inch here in the lab, but there is also a 75 inch that we expect to perform very similarly. All right, no more messing around, let's get started. The design of the TCL 8 series is awesome. It has a bezel-less design on three sides with a silver gray bottom border. The stand is mounted in the middle, which is great for those of you with a narrow entertainment cabinet. It is reminiscent of the Samsung NU8000 from last year. The stand is heavy and sturdy, so the TV won't wobble much. Unfortunately, if you want to fit a soundbar in front of your TV, you'll have to place it in front of the stand that already sits 14 inches deep. If you decide to wall mount your QA25, it won't protrude much from the wall because it is fairly thin, similar to many other TVs we've seen this year. The 8 series also has the same looking back design the 6 series has, with a glossy top half and a matte plastic bottom half that houses the electronics. As we see here, it's a little disappointing that there is no cable management at all. There isn't even a small clip to run cables through the back of the center mounted stand which could have been easily included. Down here, we have the single power button that can only select inputs and turn the TV on and off, exactly like some other TCLs we've seen this year. The remote will be the only way to fully take advantage of this Roku TV. As we turn back around to the front of the display, we'll look at it with our thermal camera. Since this TV uses a full array local dimming mini LED backlight, the heat is evenly distributed across the entire screen. It runs slightly cooler than the Samsung Q80R, probably because of its larger surface area to cool off. The border also seems to act like a heatsink, as you can tell by the hotter areas along the edges of the TV. We'll be comparing the QA25 to other TVs currently available, but competing models can change as new TVs are released throughout the year. Since we're nearing the end of 2019, we expect this set to compete with newer 2020 models as well. To stay up to date with the comparisons as we buy and test new models, check out the review page on our website linked in the description below. Let's get started with the picture quality. The contrast is one of the most important aspects of a TV. It is the ratio between the measured brightest and darkest part of a scene. A good contrast ratio generally means good black levels and an image that pops. The 8 series is an outstanding performer. It has a great native contrast ratio around 6700 to 1 and is immensely improved further when local dimming is enabled to almost 40,000 to 1. It is the highest contrast ratio we've ever measured on an LED TV, which is very impressive. This comes with a caveat though, and that is that this is the contrast ratio on a static test pattern. In this case, the local dimming works with the tiny little zones to boost bright whites while turning off zones for deep blacks. In regular content, the local dimming is applied a little differently as we'll see soon. The Q825 has a better contrast than most other LED TVs such as the Samsung Q80R, Vizio P Quantum X2019 and the Sony X950G. Now, this is the part where I'm going to have to be the bearer of some unfortunate news. The heavily hyped local dimming, thanks to the mini LED full array backlight offers only decent performance and isn't as good as some other implementations. First of all, on a positive note, the local dimming is good in medium to high brightness scenes. It helps highlights pop and minimizes blooming thanks to the small size of each zone. Subtitles don't have much blooming, which is good, but is due to them being so bright that your eyes can't distinguish the blooming. The problem with the local dimming lies in darker scenes and fast moving objects. The algorithm is very aggressive and completely crushes out lots of detail in darker scenes in both SDR and HDR content. The intro to Stranger Things Season 3 Episode 2 is almost unwatchable as around 80% of the screen is crushed out and the only thing that's visible is the light coming in through the windows which looks like blooming and causes a weird non-uniform look. In the intro to Netflix's Our Planet, there are almost no visible stars. It's not like we haven't seen Star Crush before, but there's more to it. As the Earth is spinning, the sides of the Earth are completely crushed out. The local dimming tries to boost the brightness of the lights coming from the Earth at night and causes each individual zone to turn on as the Earth spins. This is very noticeable and distracting, and since there are many little zones that can visibly turn off and on, it causes a sort of uniformity issue. Here's a video to show it off a little better. Note, it is more noticeable in real life. On our local dimming test pattern, as the ball moves quickly, you can see the tiny zones turn on and off. 
Since they are not all turning on at exactly the same time, it causes a weird checkered golf ball effect. And on small objects, it is crushed out almost completely. It's unfortunate because the mini LED full array backlight sounded promising, but the implementation here is more distracting in dark scenes than the problem it was trying to fix, black level. The local dimming can probably be improved through a tweak to the algorithm, although this was tested with the current latest firmware. We'll add a note below if there's a firmware update that fixes these problems. We tested the TV with the local dimming set to high because although local dimming medium helped improve contrast on our static test pattern, it didn't seem to look any different than with the local dimming turned off in real scenes. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's move on to the things the TV can do well. The QA25 can get very bright. In SDR, it can achieve a maximum brightness of close to 1900 nits and a real scene brightness of 900 nits. This will help if the TV is placed in a well-lit room as it can easily combat glare. It is brighter than most LED TVs and has one of the highest real scene peak brightnesses in SDR. HDR peak brightness is a similar story but is important for different reasons. HDR peak brightness allows for a TV to deliver impactful bright highlight detail, making for an impressive picture the way the creator of the content intended you to see it. The TCL 8 Series 2019 supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HLG HDR formats, just like the Sony and Vizio, and unlike the Samsung that supports HDR10 Plus and not Dolby Vision. The 8 Series 2019 gets very bright and HDR content pops, and is better than the Sony and Samsung, performing very similarly to the Vizio P Quantum X 2019. Let's move on to the gray uniformity. Our gray uniformity test checks for any uniformity issues with the panel, where different pixels are supposed to display the exact same color, but may not. This is done by taking a picture of a 50% and 5% gray pattern on each TV. Cloudy spots and other issues present on these slides are known as the dirty screen effect. This is most problematic when playing games or watching sports, which often tend to display uniform colors across the screen. The TCL 8 Series 2019 has decent uniformity, with noticeable DSE, slightly dark edges around the display, and one of the worst 5% gray uniformities we've measured. Save for that last one, this is typical of TCLs. The TCL 8 Series 2019 might not be the best choice for sports fans and gamers because uniform colors are very common in those types of content. Gray uniformity is one aspect of panel that can vary between units though, so yours might perform differently. If you come across a panel that doesn't correspond to our results, let us know in the comments below. Now, onto the viewing angles. VA type panels usually favor darker black levels while sacrificing image accuracy when viewed off center, and that's no different here. The viewing angles are bad, with colors shifting and washing out around 25 degrees off axis. If image accuracy off center is important to you, the Samsung Q80R or the 75 and 85 inch versions of the X950G will be better choices thanks to the extra optical layer that improves viewing angles. Do note, we haven't tested the 75 or 85 inches of the Sony, so we don't know precisely how it performs. For those of you in a bright room, glare can be a huge problem. Luckily, the TCL 8 series does a good job at cutting reflections. Coupled with the high brightness, the TCL would be an excellent option for a bright room. That being said, the other options here from Sony, Samsung, and Vizio do perform better. Since they are all high brightness LED TVs, any of them will perform well in a bright room. We found that out of the box, the pre-calibration on our unit was way off, especially in the white balance and gamma. Even though the TV was set to track gamma 2.2, the TCL 8 Series 2019 was tracking closer to 2.45, with darker scenes somewhere in the 2.5 to 2.9 range. The higher the gamma, the darker the translated signal is reproduced on screen. So, at low signal levels, or dark scenes, the image is way too dark. This may explain why we saw such bad black crush as mentioned earlier in the local dimming section. The color temperature was also very warm. We had to calibrate our display after changing the gamma setting to 2.0 to better track our goal of gamma 2.2. This is another aspect of picture quality that varies between units, so if your set looks different than ours, let us know in the comments below. The quantum dot backlight helps the QA25 achieve a wide color gamut and color volume. A wide color gamut is important for producing vivid color in HDR content. The DCI P3 color space, which is used by most commercial Blu-rays, is 93% filled. This is similar to the X950G and Q80R, but the Vizio P Quantum X 2019 has the widest color gamut. The Rec 2020 color space is 80% filled, leaving it again between the Sony and Samsung and the Vizio. The color volume is great too, thanks to its high brightness and contrast, allowing it to perform better than the other three TVs. In HDR, the PQ-EOTF curve dictates how the TV receives the signal and translates it to a specific brightness, which we measure on each HDR TV. This graph shows if the TV can follow the reference standard that content is mastered at. The reference curve is the yellow line you see here. 
The reference line is unachievable by any TV at the moment, so every TV has a way to tone map the signal to the display's capabilities, and that is the gray line you see here. The QA25 doesn't follow it perfectly in dark scenes, where details are darkened and crushed out, similar to the gamma we saw earlier. At higher stimuli, above 50%, which is around 100 nits, the 8 series does very well. It can get very bright and only starts to roll off and clip around 1800 nits, which is great. If you care about how accurate your image is to what the creator intended, the Sony X950 or the Vizio Pequanum X2019 will follow the EOTF more accurately, whereas the Samsung performs similarly to the TCL, but over brightens instead of over darkens. Let's move on to the motion handling of the QA25. First, we'll start with the response time, which is the time it takes for a single pixel to change color. The TCL 8 Series 2019 has a good response time, but some darker scenes will have very long transitions, causing visible ghosting. The TCL 8 Series 2019 also has a constant backlight flicker of 960Hz at under 80% full brightness, which fortunately doesn't cause any real issues. At max backlight, the QA25 flickers at 120Hz. The TV is so bright that we don't expect most people to have their set at max backlight, so this shouldn't be an issue for most people. If you want to clear up the persistence blur, you can enable the LED motion clarity option, which is the black frame insertion feature. This lowers the flicker to 60 Hz, which can be bothersome for some people, but clears up the motion considerably. Unfortunately, there are still some visible duplications because of the poor timing that can't be improved. Next, we'll look at the input lag, which is important for gamers. Input lag is the time it takes for an action in-game to appear on the screen. High input lag can be incredibly distracting. The 8 Series 2019 has a great low input lag, around 27 milliseconds at most resolutions. This is higher than previous TCLs from this year, namely the 6 Series 2019, but it shouldn't be an issue for most people, including most gamers. Competitive players might notice this difference though, so for a better gaming experience, the Samsung Q80R is recommended. The TCL 8 Series 2019 accepts 120Hz signals, but can't display 120Hz content properly as it skips every other frame. All right, moving on to the smart features. The 8 Series 2019 uses the Roku Smart Platform, which is great. It is easy to use and has a wide range of apps that Roku calls streaming channels. Unfortunately, there are large ads on the home screen which cannot be disabled. The remote also features a voice command feature, so some settings and functions can be controlled with your voice, such as opening YouTube or checking the time, which is handy. There are also four dedicated app buttons that help you jump straight into an app located at the bottom of the remote. The speakers that come integrated in the 8 Series 2019 are good. It also features Dolby Atmos decoding, but you will not get the true effect of Atmos through the two tiny speakers. If you want better sound for movies, dialogue, or to get a true Atmos soundstage, discrete home theater speakers or a soundbar is recommended. We also now review soundbars, so check out the link in the description below. So overall, the TCL 8 Series 2019 is a great 4K HDR TV with good picture quality. It's TCL's best TV to date and is a good step forward for mini LED full array local dimming TVs. Even if this implementation wasn't great, the technology has potential and as this is the first generation of mini LED TVs in the US, it is breaking ground for more development in the future. Now, compared to the competition it aims for, it falls a little short. Versus the Samsung Q80R, the TCL 8 series gets brighter and supports Dolby Vision HDR. The Samsung has better viewing angles, faster input lag, more accurate colors out of the box, and a better local dimming algorithm. The Samsung also has better reflection handling, so it is the better TV to buy. Compared to the Vizio P-Series Quantum X 2019, the Vizio is the better TV for most people. It has a better local dimming algorithm, similar brightness, a wider color gamut, and better color accuracy. For those of you who prefer the Roku Smart Platform, or a TV with a center-mounted foot, the TCL is still a good choice. Finally, the TCL Q825 versus the Sony X950G. Both TVs have their advantages, so which one you buy will depend on what is important to you. The Sony will be more color accurate out of the box at the expense of higher black level and a less aggressive local dimming feature. The TCL will be less accurate, but will have a much higher contrast ratio, will get brighter, and has a more aggressive local dimming feature that limits blooming and gets impressively dark, with the caveat of some backlight artifacting. For most people, the Sony is the better TV, but again, this is dependent on what is important to you. So that's all for the 2019 TCL 8 series. It's definitely a TV that surprised us this year, but maybe not in the way we expected it to. Let us know down below if you feel it has lived up to the hype or just missed its mark. You can check out all of the measurements for all of these TVs on our website. If you want access to the latest test results before they are officially published, become an insider on the website. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos drop. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.